Hello there, welcome to the June 2019 Applied Paper. Here we're looking at question three. Barbara is investigating the relationship between average income, GDP per capita, X in X US dollars, and average annual carbon dioxide, CO2 emissions, in Y tons for different countries. She takes a random sample of 24 countries and finds the product moments correlation coefficient between average annual CO2 emissions and average income to be 0.446. State your hypothesis clearly and the 5% significance level whether or not the product moments correlation coefficient for all countries is greater than zero. Okay, so let's start off with our hypotheses. Our hypothesis is to start with that there is no correlation between the two variables, and our alternate hypothesis is that it is greater than zero. So rho is greater than zero. Now what we're going to be working out here is the value for r, and in fact it's told us the value of r is 0 0.446. Now R is the product moments correlation coefficient of these 24 countries, but rho is representing the, um, the kind of product moments correlation coefficient between all countries. This is just a sample PMCC, this is a population PMCC. That's why we use different letters there. But effectively they're the same letter, just rho is R in Greek, and this is English R, or, or Roman numerals R or whatever it's called. Anyway, so what we need to now do is compare this 0.446 with the with the formula booklet table. So we go to the formula booklet table and I've taken a snippet here. So on the 5% significance level where we have 24 as our sample size, we go across and down and we get to the benchmark which is 0.3438. That is the benchmark for when you have a sample size of 24, whether we can say or not that there is positive correlation, or you could use the negative side for negative correlation as well. So on the formula booklet, let's just write 5% uh, significance as well, to really set out and formalize our answer. Um, on the formula booklet table, from formula booklet, the value is 0.3438. So as 0.446 is greater than 0.3438, there is evidence to reject H0 and support positive correlation. So there we are, that's our answer for part A. So it's just a little hypothesis test using the formula booklet. Moving on to uh, part B and part C now, Barbara believes that a non-linear model would be a better fit to the data. She codes the data using the coding of m equals log 10 of x and c equals log 10 of y and obtains the model c equals minus 1.82 plus 0.9889m. The product moments correlation coefficient between c and m is found to be 0.882, much better correlation because it's closer to 1. Explain how this value supports Barbara's belief. Well, it's just exactly what I've said there. If we go to the formula booklet, it says the value of PMCC is closer to 1, so there is strong positive correlation. So one mark for, for your explanation um, about the strength of the correlation. Moving on to part C now, show that the relationship between x and y can be written in the form y equals ax to the power of n, where a and n are constants to be found. I need my calculator for this part. So let's start off by writing it as c equals minus 1.82 plus 0.89m. And let's replace m with log 10 of x and c with log 10 of y. So it's going to be log base 10 of y equals minus 1.82 plus 0.89 log base 10 of x. So to get rid of this log base 10, what we'll have to do is do 10 to the power of both sides. So 10 to the power of both sides, that's going to give us y equals 10 to the power of, now we can't do these this individually, we have to do it all together. One point Minus one point eight nine wait one minus one point eight two plus zero point eight nine log base ten of x. 
Okay, so that's the best we can do on the right hand side. You can't do it individually, you can't cancel out stuff individually. But what we're now going to use is the rule of indices that will split up this addition on the indice into a multiplication of two different powers where the base is both uh, 10. So it would be times 10 to the 0.89 log base 10 of x. So what we've done there is we've split up the rule of uh, indices where if you've got two powers where they've got the same base and you're multiplying them, you add the indices. We've just done that process in reverse. What I'm now going to do is I'm now going to use the law of logarithms to move that 0.89 in as a power on the x. So it's going to be 10 to the power of minus 1.82 times 10 to the power of log base 10 of 0.89. Now the next thing I've got to do is just work out what 10 to the power of minus 1.82 is. So if I do that in my calculator now, 10 to the power of minus 1.82, I get 0.015. So that's the answer to, to this calculation here, multiplied by 10. So no, not 10. Let's, let's do this uh, calculation of this component here. When you've got 10 to the power of log 10, this just cancels out effectively. So it's going to be x to the power of 0.89. x to the power of 0.89. So there we are. So I moved the 0.89 in as a power on the x. So it's x to the power of 0.89. In fact, let's just rewrite that out as x to the power of 0.89, like that. Uh, so then when you cancel out the 10 and the log 10, you just get what's inside your bracket, x to the power of 0.89. So there we are, that's the answer for the formula uh, in part C. And that's our answer for the whole of question 3, worth 9 marks in total there. Let's now move on to question 4.